In this past week, there have been a series of attacks against conservatives or Trump supporters. And I'm going to try to be very careful how I phrase this, but I believe it is fair to say a Bernie Sanders supporter just tried to burn down a Republican HQ in California. A man broke in, tried burning the place down. They claim they're accusing him of arson, stole a Trump flag. And when they detained him, he had a Bernie Sanders sticker prominently displayed on his bike. I think it's fair to say this guy was a Bernie supporter. I know a lot of people on the left and a lot of Bernie supporters are going to get mad about this, but let's not play any games, man. This is not the first time a Bernie supporter has done something violent. It's not the first time Bernie supporters have called for violence on camera exposed by Project Veritas. It's not the first time general far leftists have attacked people or tried to cause damage. It is certainly not the first time GOP HQs have been attacked by the far left. And just last week, a guy in a van ran, ran his van through a voter registration tent being run by Republicans. And we have two other stories today. A guy was wearing a joke MAGA hat. It said, make 50 great again. It was his birthday. And a woman attacked him, punching him in the face, leaving a gash. Perhaps he was wearing a ring of some sort. And then apparently some other guy was wielding a cane sword and going after Trump supporters. But this story, I think, is the most important because we have seen from Project Veritas Bernie Sanders supporters straight up saying that they want to put conservatives in gulags, that they're planning the crazy stuff, but keeping it secret. Sure enough, this dude, this is in Eureka, California, breaks into the Republican headquarters, tries to burn it down, steals the Trump flag, and lo and behold, he's got the big old Bernie sticker on his bike. Let's read from KRCR News, ABC7. A man arrested on a slew of charges, including attempted arson of the Republican Party of Humboldt headquarters, is back out on the street after spending only a day in jail before posting bail. On Saturday, on Saturday, February 8th at about 4.53 a.m., officers at the Eureka Police Department responded to the office on 5th Street for the report of a man smashing the windows. The witness gave a description of the suspect and said he was last seen riding a bicycle toward the bay. Officers quickly arrived on scene and saw the man on the boardwalk. They said the suspect fled from them on the bike, but after a short pursuit, he was detained. According to the EPD, the suspect was found to be in possession of a Trump political flag. His bicycle had a Bernie political sticker prominently displayed, police said. Police said they found the man, later identified as 43-year-old Michael Valls of Eureka, riding his bike near the foot of D Street. Police said Valls tried to flee from officers, but was ultimately taken into custody after a brief struggle. He was found to be in possession of items linking him to the vandalism on 5th Street, police said. Upon investigation, police said they discovered that three large front plate glass windows had been shattered with what appeared to be multiple blows or thrown rocks. Police also said a Trump political flag had been taken from inside one of the shattered windows, which matched the flag found in Vol's possession. Inside the building, as if it had been thrown through one of the shattered windows, was a liquid chemical, according to police. Humboldt Bay Fire responded and determined the liquid was flammable, the EPD said. Samples of the liquid were collected, photographs of the scene were taken, and possible sources for video surveillance of the incident were identified. The reporting part, the reporting party was contacted. The reporting party was contacted, and through an infield show up, and she identified Valls as the suspect she saw breaking the windows of the GOP building. Valls was arrested and booked into the Humboldt County Correctional Facility for attempted arson, burglary, felony vandalism, resisting arrest, and providing a false name. According to the jail on Saturday, Valls was being held in lieu of twenty-five thousand dollars bail. North Coast News contacted the jail again on Monday, who said Vail, Valls bailed out of jail on Saturday. So they actually have video of what happened. But well, we can see the image, presumably of Valls, you know, smashing the window. They say this is one of several times the Humboldt GOP headquarters in Eureka has been targeted by suspected vandals. Numerous videos posted of every time it's happened in the past. Check this one out. August of 2018, they didn't even spell indict right. They, they spelled it I-N-D-I-T-E. Oh man, I don't know if you watched my video yesterday, but there was a survey done through Slate Star Codex showing that the, the far left is much, much more likely to have been diagnosed with some kind of mental illness. So I'm not surprised. You get stupid people across the board, but how many of those stupid people get violent? Indict is spelled I-N-D-I-C-T, not I-N-D-I-T-E. So perhaps that, you know, people don't know how to spell all that well, correlates somehow to the, the insanity of when they actually go and attack a GOP headquarters. So look, 
I know Bernie Sanders supporters are going to get really angry about this, but Bernie Sanders was forced to denounce the violence in the past. Back in 2016, I think it was in 2016, because his supporters are violent. Not all of them, but too many. Now they talk, they, they run the smear about the Bernie bros on the internet as if there's this horde, a swarm of, of bees that sting you when you dare come after Bernie. I don't believe that. That's nonsense. If people are mean to you on the internet, grow up. But this is legitimate. This is not the first time the headquarters have been targeted. It's not the first time the GOP headquarters around the country have been targeted. It's not the first time Bernie supporters have been violent. Bernie had to denounce it. But now, following the attacks in Florida, GOP Republicans are vowing revenge. That's right. Republicans getting ready to go vote. Because as much as the media wants to call it their revenge, it's really just them saying they're going to vote now. Because I honestly don't think you're going to see a whole lot of conservatives doing anything like this. This is why the Proud Boys have made such serious errors. Because it gives the media everything they need. Now, of course, the Proud Boys say things like, you know, they're, they're defending themselves. I can respect that. Antifa marches around harassing you and targeting people. Of course, people are trying to defend themselves. And you walk right into the hands of the media who will ignore this because these stories should be of national prominence. A Bernie Sanders supporter, first of all, where's MSNBC or CNN on this one? They hate Bernie. They should absolutely be, be picking this up. Surprisingly, nobody picked up the Veritas reporting either. But I think that's more about not wanting to legitimize Veritas. The mainstream media does not like that organization. Well, because they've been made to look bad. Veritas has exposed many of them as well. But there's nothing stopping them from saying Bernie supporters literally are committing acts of terrorism, or at least this one guy is. So I wonder why that's not happening. Could you imagine if this was inverted? If a Trump supporter targeted a Democrat HQ or a Bernie Sanders HQ, or a guy waving a Trump flag did something like this, it would be front page news, prime time, every single show. Republicans would be on the defensive. Well, let's hear about this grand old revenge from Politico. Republicans vow revenge at ballot box after volunteers nearly hit by van. That's basically the story. For those that aren't familiar, a guy said he was standing up to Trump or someone had to take a stand, crashed his van through this uh, Republican tent. You can see in this photo, it's knocked over. People narrowly avoided getting hit. And then he started filming, jumped out, flicked him off. He told police exactly why he did it. Well, now in Florida, Republicans are vowing revenge at the ballot box, but I love how they try to sensationalize it at least a little bit. Sorry, Trump supporters are not the ones going around marching, wearing all black and smashing things. There's been a lot of weaponized press in national media over the Proud Boys getting into one fight. And this is what I find so fascinating. And this is why I'm going to say to you guys right now, the Proud Boys are, well, they have, it's not, they've not really been in the news for a while, but they walked right into the media trap. This is what they wanted. A, a Bernie supporter, or a guy with a Bernie sticker on his bike, I think it's fair to say a supporter, literally just tried to torch the GOP headquarters, burn it down. Another weird leftist just crashed his, his van through a tent. No major mainstream political news, no large viral conversations. Now, Politico is talking about the aftermath. I'll respect that. But you get into one street fight, Antifa shows up to a protest, to, a, to a, a, an event in New York. So the Proud Boys end up confronting them. And what happens? Front page news, New York Times, BuzzFeed, everybody gone. Pick it up. That's right. Life's not fair. The media is biased and they will weaponize everything they can against you. Now, I think the Proud Boys should not have done, done what they did. They shouldn't have, they, they, they engaged to a certain degree. They tried claiming it was self-defense, but they ran towards Antifa. And so there it was. They lost their hard defense. I think the prison sentences they got were insane. Like four years for a street fight. That's nuts. Now, this is what's really crazy. I, I couldn't believe it when I saw this story that not only did this guy try to burn down the GOP headquarters, they let him out a day later. Are you nuts? Let's talk about how deranged these people are. This story blew my mind. Ex-NYPD cop punched at his Nashville birthday party after red cap mistaken for MAGA hat. He got a punch in the face. He's got some bleeding going on. They say, a retired NYPD detective says a woman punched him in the face in Nashville over the weekend because his hat looked like a MAGA cap. Staten Island resident Daniel Sprague told The Post he was celebrating his 50th birthday when his wife and friends at the stage on Broadway on Friday with his wife and friends. When he was assaulted by a woman, he did not know. I was outside with my friends when some, someone grabbed me from behind, 
spun me around and punched me in the face, said Sprague, who retired from the NYPD in 2009. At first, I thought it was a friend until I got hit. I couldn't believe someone could get that upset. In reality, his cap was emblazoned with the words, make 50 great again, while his shirt was decorated with an American flag that read, making America great since 1970. It was a joke. It was his birthday. They were, they were joking about Trump hats. They were joking about Trump. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if the guy's actually a Trump supporter for sure. But this is how insane these people have gotten. I was at a protest once and I saw a woman wearing a hat that said something like, make America gay again. But it looked just like a MAGA hat. And I was surprised. I was like, you're going to get beat up. These people don't know who you are. They don't care who you are. They just chase you down and beat you as soon as someone, someone yells something about you. I have seen people walking around clueless, and then one person just points the finger and yells, and the crowd descends upon them screaming and chanting, and no one has any idea what's happening. None of these weird, mindless zombie people know who they're protesting or why. They are just strange cultists who chant over and over again and don't listen to words. They are quite literally NPCs. And this NPC saw a joke hat, didn't read it. You're wearing a red hat? I'm gonna punch you in the face, she says. The bar's bouncer booted them both from the property before he had a chance to call the cops, but he filed a report the following day. All night, people were giving me thumbs up, smiles, or showing rage until they walked up close and saw what the the hat said. Then they would wish me a happy birthday. He was baffled by the vitriol and said he showed respect for politicians he didn't like. He said, I love Trump, but I wouldn't hit someone who had a Bernie hat on, said Sprague, who went more than two decades, uh, who spent more than two decades in the NYPD and retired as a member of the elite emergency services unit. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. I wasn't an Obama fan, but if he walked into a place where I was, I would show him, I would show him and the office respect. The Metropolitan Nashville Police Department confirmed that they took a report on the incident. Suspect grabbed his hat from his head and punched him in the face, according to the report. He stated that when the suspect hit him in the face, he did not hit her back. Sprague encountered, recounted the incident on Facebook and said that he was waiting to hear back from detectives. He also instructed readers not to react to negative comments on the post because it might be one of his friends breaking my chops because we have a great relationship and sense of humor. You'll find that a lot of Trump supporters do. If it happens to be a fool or misguided snowflakes comment by arguing with them, it will only encourage them to believe they know what they are talking about. Right now on the Donald subreddit is the orange face meme, Trump's bright orange face in the sunlight. They don't care. They make fun of themselves. They wear hats that are silly parodies of Donald Trump. And they don't go around bashing random people or smashing up Bernie vans. They don't go to Bernie's headquarters and smash windows and try and burn it down. It's the far left doing that. In the exposés from Veritas, what do we see? These people are saying they want to get violent. They need to get violent. They want to put people like this man in a camp. That's where they're going. And if you don't believe their rhetoric, these people are unhinged. They're nuts. Look at how they act. We have had more than one GOP headquarters in the past year vandalized. This was one of the more extreme instances and from an overt Bernie Sanders supporter. And as I stated earlier, Bernie did come out in the past telling people knock it off. Even Noam Chomsky was slammed by the far left for denouncing the violence. Noam Chomsky, the famous leftist, said when we enter the arena of violence, the most brutal guy wins. And that's not us. And they ragged on him saying that, you know, pacifism and civility are the tools of the oppressor. This is going to get Trump reelected. What do you think someone, what do you think is going to happen when Trump runs a campaign ad saying a Bernie Sanders supporter tried to burn down Republican headquarters? There's, I, I, I think you are nuts if you think Bernie Sanders can win. Now, I, look, all due respect to, to many people who are, are, are Bernie supporters who I know, prominent progressive commenta- uh, commentators, I think you're, 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 you're entitled to your opinions. There's a lot of people who are very civil and, and interested in actual, actual conversations I agree with. Because I think when it comes to whatever the populist side is in terms, you know, anti-elitist, anti-establishment, we can all agree in that regard. The machine is, is broken. It cheats, etc. But Bernie Sanders has so much going on that that's really, really bad for him. 78-year-old socialist who just had a heart attack. He's not going to win. So he's winning right now the nomination. I think the superdelegates will come in after a contested convention and give it to Buttigieg or something. But maybe, maybe Bernie wins. 538 thinks he will. Think about what happens then when he enters the general. You've got Veritas expose videos that Bernie never addressed. 
You've got Bernie straight up acknowledging he knows his base is violent. You've got Bernie Sanders campaign staff talking about gulags being good and wanting to put conservatives in them. You've got Bernie supporters trying to burn down Republican headquarter buildings. All of these things will appear in campaign ads. Antifa videos will appear in campaign ads, and they will show that these people support Bernie Sanders. And how is he going to win? This is going to not only embolden Trump, but it's going to strengthen the police state. So I try to explain to people on the far left when they get violent. You are basically a bunch of people running around literally with ball peen hammers trying to strike at a giant skyscraper. And the response from the state will be to embolden it. Regular Americans will be scared when they see black clad individuals running around with smoke bombs and weapons, and they will beg for more authority from the state. That's what you are creating. If you were concerned about the rise of true fascism, stop giving them the tools they need and pr- pr- approach it with civil disobedience because then you win that fight. <clears throat> now, I don't know what's going to happen. We got one more story I'll briefly go through. Cane sword wielding Dunnelin man accused of threatening Trump supporters. This is how insane everything has gotten. Now, of course, this is in Florida, I guess. This is from Ocala.com. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we need to read too much into what else happened with the story. You get it. A guy with a cane sword, which I'm pretty sure cane swords are like super illegal, was once again, you know, was threatening Trump supporters. So once again, this is the story. Look, I, I've, I've gone up to dinner. I've met a lot of Trump supporters. I've sat and talked to them. They got opinions. You don't got to like their opinions, but at the end of the day, they got opinions. I've sat down and explained certain things. And, and, and so long as they're interested in having a conversation, people are actually interested in learning and better understanding the other side. But what happens when you have a deranged group of unhinged, in, unhinged individuals, which according to the survey I talked about yesterday, are more likely to be, me- more likely to be mentally ill? Maybe it's that this, this, this ideology attracts the mentally ill. But I think this is going to be the downfall of Bernie Sanders. Moderates are insulated from this to a certain degree. In fact, the moderates should be calling this out, talking about how we need to oppose this radical violence. And, and what's Bernie Sanders going to say? He's going to literally have to highlight it and say, yep, yep, we, I'm sorry. My supporters shouldn't be doing this. Do people go around with Buttigieg signs smashing windows? Do people go around with Biden or Klobuchar signs smashing windows? Does Bloomberg have an army of black clad individuals with crowbar smashing windows? The answer is no, they don't. So for everything wrong with those candidates, and you might not like them, it's the Bernie, Bernie Sanders base that are doing this. Not all of them, not every Bernie Sanders person but they're not doing anything to stop it. When Veritas exposed them, what happened? Zip, they, they locked up their social media accounts and the, and the official memos, or, or, or I believe this is what was said, story went out, t- telling people just keep their mouths shut. You mean to tell me you had these people saying these insane things working directly for your campaign offices and your memo is just, shh, shh, don't let them find out? What do you think is going to happen when it comes to general? You know what? I hope Bernie Sanders wins that nomination for two reasons. The Bernie Sanders supporters were cheated last time. They're being cheated again. So you know what? Fine. Y'all deserve to win if that's what the Democratic Party wants. But for the other reason is to see how, how the media and how the Trump-based Republicans are going to highlight all of these things Bernie has ignored to completely obliterate him in the general election. Newt Gingrich just said that this could be a total disaster for Sanders where he wins like one or two states. Could you imagine if, if Sanders gets the nomination and it goes to the, the Electoral College and the entire country just turns red, except for like California, that would be nuts. I'm not entirely convinced that'll be the case. People really do dislike Trump's, dare I say, hate him, as you can see with this GOP attack. But I'll tell you what, man, the average American who doesn't like Trump, the never Trumpers will run crying back to Trump if Bernie Sanders gets the nomination. At least that's what I think. Now, Bernie might light up some new progressive voters, but hey, Iowa voter turnout was down. New Hampshire voter, voter turnout was actually really high, higher than 2008. But first time voters, youth voters and moderates weren't there. Bernie Sanders isn't bringing in new voters because new voters were down. He's not bringing in young voters. Young voters were down. He's just bringing in older Democrats who maybe feel like now's their chance. But that voter turnout was, was bigger among moderates with 53% of the vote going to moderate candidates. I want to see what happens in the general when they refuse to acknowledge what this person did. It'll be in every campaign ad, all of the attacks. Stick around. I'll see you on the next segment coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out.